Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and Thou only, first in my heart. High King of Heaven, my treasure. Father, you are good in every way. And we know that while these are very unusual times, it is always a time to bring you praise and glory. So Lord, wherever we are scattered, I ask that our main joy would be worshiping you and loving you and loving our neighbor. And whatever forms those take, I ask that they would be pleasing to you, that you would look down on us with favor, that you would bless us as we are made more and more into the image of your son. So Father, please protect us, please heal us, and please always be near. Please comfort us in everything that we do as we glorify your name and ask for these things in the name of your son. Amen. You know, none of us could have, uh, could imagine the changes that that would have taken place just in the last week. You know, we've gone from a uh, national emergency to um, a state of war against a, a virus. And, uh, and we, you know, we, we just were trying to, to, to figure, all of, uh, figure all this out. You know, I, I, was, uh, I was thinking at the uh, I was thinking at the first of the year, um, you know, I'd received my, uh, I had received my uh, quarterly statement on my retirement fund, and I called a good friend of mine uh, somewhere in the first of January, and I said, man, my retirement fund is finally looking healthy. I, you know, I, I, I feel, I feel co more comfortable than I have in a long time, but today, I don't, I don't even want to, uh, I don't even want to look at it. I don't even want to look at it. I, I'm thinking more in terms of, uh, of my old um, retirement plan. And that old retirement plan was to move in with one of my successful children. And I, and I want to say to, to my children, if they may be joining us this, this morning, one of you needs to be very successful. Because your, uh, your mom and I, are, are, I may have to move in with you. Oh, you just don't know. You know, we, uh, we, we have heard all of the extremes that are out there. On the one side, we've heard the doomsday scenario that it's all bad. Uh, on the other end, we, we hear the, the kid on spring break that, uh, that, that says, I'm not, I don't care about this virus. If I get sick, I get sick. If I give it to somebody else, that's their 
problem. You know, we've, we've, we've heard, um, we've heard the, um, the, the extremes that, um, that are out there. Um, and, and what are we, what are we to do when we face uh, those extremes? Um, when we face times of, uh, of, of terrible uncertainty. You know, I, um, I heard the story of, uh, of the pastor that, uh, you know, was, uh, the community had gone through a time of crisis, and uh, he, he decided that Sunday morning that he was going to preach on the judgment of God. You know, that time we, we are all frail, we are all, uh, we are all limited and terminal, and that there's going to come a time when we die and we stand before God and give, give an account of our lives. And, you know, we'd say, well, that's an important message. So he stamped before his congregation, and he, he began by saying, every member of this church is going to die. And you can imagine there was this somber kind of look that, that fell upon the faces of everybody that was in the, uh, in the, in the room. Everybody but this one guy that was in the, in the middle section in the third row, he had a big smile on his face. And that irritated the pastor. The, the, uh, the, the pastor looked at that and he said, uh, you know, irritated. So he said it again. Every member of this church is going to die. And he had the somber look on the faces of everybody that was out there. Except for this guy in the middle, in the third, third pew. He had just a big smile, and his smile was bigger than it was before. And so the pastor was more irritated, and he, he said, You, you fellow right there in the third pew in the middle section, did you hear what I said? And he said, Yeah. He said, What did I say? You said, Every member of this church is going to die. Yeah. And then why are you smiling? He said, I'm not a member of this church. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful if, if we could just avoid all of the hardships and the difficulties of life? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could just snap our fingers and, and, uh, and, and all of the, the, the despair or all the suffering, whatever that's going on around it, if we could uh, uh, avoid that altogether? But what if, what if God intends for us as his people, as people of faith, to walk through this with others? What if God intends for us to be in the midst of all of this challenge and difficulty? What if he means uh, for that to happen? I mean, uh, I mean, we live in a time when people are very uncertain about what's going to happen. People are asking questions like, uh, how much longer is this going to continue? Uh, what if things get worse before they get better? Uh, what, 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 if, uh, what, what does this mean for my life? What does this mean for my family? What does this mean for my employment? What does this mean for my, my future? What does it mean for us? People are uncertain and, and, and what, what, do you, what, do you, what do you do when it seems like the, the whole world is just spinning out of control? What do you do? See, for us, we have, we have a statement of faith. We have good news to share. That no matter the... The, the, the time of despair or, or difficulty or, or discouraging time or trial, that we have someone who is with us, someone that walks through this with us, that the Lord is with us. That's the good news. We may not know about tomorrow, but we know who holds us in the tomorrow. The Lord is with us. You know, um, I was thinking about when I was 11 years old, we moved out to the country, and we were 
you know, we were there long enough to, to move, you know, to, uh, to go into the, that late spring time of the year when you would have storms that would brew up. And, and one, one, one time, about two o'clock in the morning, my father came into the room and he, and, uh, and he woke me up and my, woke my brother up and he said, go into the hallway right now. Well, as I, as I was waking up, I realized then we're in the midst of a terrible storm. It was a storm. There was lightning and thunder and the wind was howling outside. I didn't know it until I woke up. Sometimes we have to wake up to see what we're in the middle of. So we went into the hallway and my father says to us, I think that there could be a tornado in this storm. And sure enough, not long after that, after that the, the, the ground began to rumble. The windows began to rattle. The wind was blowing so hard you could hear the limbs of the trees cracking outside. And a tornado made its way through about what would be about a block and a half south of us and did some terrible damage. But you know, I can remember all of that very vividly in my mind, but the one thing that I remember the most was that I was not afraid. Now, somebody might say, well, you know, um, you just, uh, you know, maybe, maybe it just happened so quickly. Uh, you didn't have time to be afraid. No, no, no. I was a timid kid when I was, you know, that age. I was timid. But I knew I was not afraid. And I think the reason that I was not afraid is because my father was there with us. And he had his arms wrapped around us. And he was not afraid. Maybe that's what we need. We as God's people and others, we just need to feel the arms of our Father around us. We, we, we need to know that he, is, that he is with us. Because if you think about the, the business professional who has propped up his whole life on his own ability, on his on his strengths, on his success, on, on his finances and possessions. But now he is watching all of that, all of that disappear right before his eyes. Or, or the prodigal daughter that went off into life and, and just left behind her faith and left behind, behind her family. But now, now she's really in need and and thinking about faith and family. Or think about the, the, the business owner of a small business and it was struggling before all of this and now is wondering how in the world are we going to survive? How's this business going to survive? And then you think of the, the elderly widow that's outlived her children, feeling alone and isolated. Or the, or the, the mother living in poverty with three children is trying to figure out now, if it's difficult before, what's it going to be like in the days ahead? I mean, there are, there are students that's trying to figure out how they're going to complete their education. And then there's this, think of this not yet believer who doesn't even know if there is a God or not, but for the first time, his heart, his mind is open to the possibility. See, what we, what we need is a, a word that encourage, encourages us in the midst of difficult times. So I want to invite you to open your Bible to the 23rd Psalm. Now, as you're looking up the 23rd Psalm, uh, I, I just want to say that I, I love the initial statement in that Psalm. David begins by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And, and I, he says, I shall not be in want. I shall not be in need. David himself had been a shepherd. David understood the relationship between the shepherd 
and the sheep. He knew that the shepherd was with the sheep, guided the sheep, cared for the sheep, loved the sheep, that there was a special relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. And as one of his foe, David says, all my needs are met. And if you're looking at home, you're looking at that that passage of Scripture, don't you love the way that psalm begins and love the way that psalm ends? It begins with words about when everything in life is just absolutely wonderful and good, when, when life is just filled with green pastures, uh, with still waters, with restored souls, and we're walking in the, in, in the right kind of path where, where everything is just absolutely wonderful. And then you go to the very last verse of this psalm, and, it, and David paints this beautiful, pristine picture of a heavenly pasture land. That when this life is over, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Don't you love that? There are times when life is so good, and then there are times we know when this life is over, we're secure for all eternity. But it's those verses in the middle that speak to us today, that talks about when life is difficult and challenging and, and moments of despair and discouragement and difficulty. We need to know some things about the Lord during that time also. Would you let me read verses 4 and 5? And you follow along. Verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup over flows. You see that word walk in verse 4? It means to be carried away. It is as though the sheep have to go through this time of life. It, it is a time when the shepherd is taking them from the, from the lower pasture lands in the winter to the, to the higher elevated plains up above after in the spring. But in order to go from one to the other, they have to go through times of difficulty. What David refers to as a, as a dark valley, as dark valleys. What, what, what we know is that life is not always, uh, not, not, not always green pastures. Sometimes green pastures turn to rough and rocky terrain. But what we know is that sometimes life is not smooth, still waters. Sometimes, sometimes the, the waters turn to rough and rocky seas. But notice that it says that we walk through the, the dark valley. Underline through, underline through. Because it's, if we live long enough and we're going to face things in our life that are difficult, that are overwhelming. There, there will be those moments in the ER. There will be those moments when we're facing a surgery or facing some treatment plan. There will be, there will be those moments where, where uh, it, it would just be like the life is turned upside down. But David, in the midst of that, makes this wonderful statement of faith. I will not be afraid because he is with me. God is with me. The shepherd is with me. I want you to say that at home. God is with me. Is there anything more important than to know that God is with us, leading us through the most difficult times of life. We will get through. The shepherd is with us. And because of that, he says, I don't have to be afraid of what I cannot see. 
He says, I will not be afraid of any evil. Whatever that may be, whatever that challenge or difficulty might be out there, whether perceived or, or could be, might be undefined, I will not be afraid because the, the, the Lord, the shepherd is with me. His presence is with me and he has the power that's necessary to see me through. His rod, his staff, his protective measures are with me. And then it's as though in verse 5 he says, and I do not have to be afraid of the things that I can see. That he sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Just think of a, think of a little sheep out there and it's just, it's just in the grass now and it's just eating on the grass and it just is so content. It is so calm. But right over there in the in the tree line is bear and wolf and cougar, enemies, threats that are just over there. But you have this little sheep and it's just eating, it's content, it's just, just calm and cool in the midst of it, what's around. And the reason is no matter what is out there, the shepherd is right beside the sheep. He's with me. We don't have to be afraid of what we can see. That's a great word. But, you know, for most of us, it's just right now, we're just facing moments of real frustration. You know, there's been a disruption of our normal way of life. It's just been real frustrating. But there's a word in here for that too, where he says, he, anoint my, he anoints my head with oil. You know, sheep were harassed by a long list of parasitic flies that would just irritate and bring all kinds of problems to the life of a little, little sheep. And so the shepherd would take this mixture of different things and would anoint, anoint the face of that sheep as a shield. And in the Bible, that that anointing is referring to the Holy Spirit and the fullness and the power of the Holy Spirit that is with us in the face of our, of our threats and frustrations. And then that one word, that one phrase, where David says, even in the midst of all of this, even in the midst of what may be out there, my cup, overflows. My cup of God's blessing, of God's spirit, of God's life flowing into me in the midst of all this. God's life, God's goodness, God's grace. It's a great word. So we need, we need a word like that to the church. What if, what if God is using this time what we are facing as a moment to reboot the church. What, what if it is a, a time when he is seeking to call us to be the church like never before for this particular time? What, what, what if it is a, a time when we truly do repent and turn to him? What, what if it is a, t a time where we seek to have a deeper relationship with him, like being revived? What, what, if, it is a, what, what if it is a time when we, we, we make best and better use of this time that we have to pray deeply, to, uh, to immerse ourselves in God's word? What, what if... What if we use, use this time as a time to find ways to be ready, ready to serve, ready to be the presence of Christ in our community? What if? Because people need us to be ready. You know what I've learned? I've learned that in the green that during times of green pasture, 
that we spend a lot of time talking about the Lord, but in the, in the dark valley, we talk to the Lord. I found that in times of green pasture, we, uh, we are prone to wander and move around. But in times of dark valley, we cling to him. And what if we took this time to hear God and be so moved in our lives in such a way to be ready? What would that mean for that business professional whose life is totally unraveled and he has no firm footing to somebody to come, for someone to come alongside them and talk about a solid rock foundation and the treasures in relationship with Jesus that does not fade or fall away? Or what if someone was ready to speak to that prodigal daughter who's thinking of her life and the things that she's done and thinking, I can never go home. And yet you have opportunity to, to say to that prodigal daughter, but home is waiting on you. What, what, what about uh, the business owner that, that's thinking we're not going to survive or the, or the elderly widow who's outlived her children the, the, the mother in poverty with three kids. What about the not yet believer who is now open to the gospel message, the good news about the hero of our lives, our Savior, Jesus? Because in a time like this, we need a Savior. When my oldest son was a little boy, he went through a time when he was afraid of the dark. I would go in and I would, I would pray with the kids and, and then I would turn off the light and close the door. But then he'd come out and he'd say, I just got to go to the restroom. And then he'd come out later and say, I just got to have some water. And so I finally went in and sat down with him and I said, hey, what's going on? He said, I'm afraid when the light is off. So I said to him, when I go out and you become afraid, what I want you to do is, I want you to call out the name Jesus. Just call out the name Jesus, and he will come, and he will be with you. You'll feel his presence. So I walked out of the room, left the door to his bedroom, opened just a little bit, and I went into the living room, and it was very quiet. And just a little bit, I heard his little voice. Jesus, he said. Jesus, Jesus. Till he finally went to sleep. That's what, that's what the church is all about. We're about turning people to look to Jesus. Maybe, maybe this is your moment when you want to trust Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life. He loves you. And he wants to be that for you. Maybe, maybe you're that person that's kind of stepped away and not been what you need to be in the Lord. You know that. No matter how many steps you feel you have taken away from him, it's just one step back. Come to him. Be embraced by his love, by his care. And it may be that we as a church, our prayer in the days that are ahead is to hear God speak, calling us to be the church, the presence of Christ in the midst of the storm. For he is with us. May God's blessings be upon you as you pray and as you reflect during this time of song, because in, in, in times like these, we have peace in him.
those roll We, uh, we, we'd come to a time in our service where we would normally receive our offering. And, uh, you know, you will see a, uh, an option that will come up about, you know, you can give online as God leads you. Um, or going through our website at First 
at firstkingsville.org slash online uh, dash giving. You can do that. Or you can uh, contribute through the mail at our P.O. Box uh, 751, um, Kingsville, Texas, 78364. Uh, but I want to take just a moment and I want to say a blessing uh, over that. And then we'll conclude our, our service. Um, Lord God, we thank you for the offering that we are receiving. We thank you, God, for the generosity that is being shown. Uh, Lord, you have used these uh, tithes and offerings uh, to allow us to fulfill our mission uh, in uh, our uh, Kingsville area and in Texas, in our nation and beyond. Uh, and we thank you for that privilege. We pray that you will bless both the gift and the giver. And to you, receive all honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this was our first time together. We're live online streaming. We're going to do this again next week, and after that, we will see. So please share with everyone around you that uh, this is happening and that we can worship together this way. Be safe. God's blessings in the meantime. Amen.